Hello and welcome to this video series tutorial on cable and wire routing in Onshape. By the end of this video you'll be able to import data from a 2D wiring schematic, build a connector library and route all your cables and harnesses in 3D. To create a connector library you can either import a part or you can model it natively, it doesn't matter. Also the orientation is not important. If colour is important though Make sure you assign face colours rather than part colours. If you use part colours, when you insert the connector, it's going to change colour. So if you want it to be consistent, use face colours. So for example, this has got all these faces here in grey, all these faces here in orange or copper or whatever colour you want. Okay, so you'll find a new feature here called wire connector. And in here, there are two options. One for insert, when you're going to insert the part and use it. The other is to define it as a connector part. So you can select any number of parts, and these can be regular parts or composite parts, doesn't matter. And you can see here, it's a single part called terminal spade. So what we're looking for here is the insertion point. So when you insert it, where is it going to appear? And it's going to default using make connectors. So that kind of makes sense. That's going to be the insertion point for this part. The important thing is the direction and orientation of the make connector. So the blue Z or Z axis is going to give us the main orientation. And you can edit this by clicking the made connector icon next to here. So if you click on there, you might want to flip that round. So it's actually positions or it assembles that way around, which is correct. The next important axis is the red or X axis. And it's correct for this one. It's going to appear in the right order. But of course, you can rotate it using the secondary axis, or you can put in a specific rotation angle or offset. You know, you have all that control over the make connector. The next is to decide whether it's a connector or a terminal. A terminal takes a single wire, okay, whereas a connector takes multiple wires, okay. In this case, this is a terminal. So let's go ahead and add this as the uh, the pinout location by selecting that face. And it can be anything which defines a direction. So it can be a cylinder, it can be an edge, it can be a face. And that's going to then create two lines, a light blue line and a magenta line. The magenta line is the strip length, okay? And that's going to be important for the wire length calculation later on. And you can get this information from the manufacturer's specification, how much wire strip length is required for the terminal. Okay, and you can just drag that to change that. The middle, one here is if you want to create an offset from the uh, selection that you had. Okay, in which case I'm just going to leave that as zero. Uh, the strip length here is three, what well, like I say is important. The last one here is the insulation length. And really this is just the straight line length of the wire before it starts in the route. And you really need to just make sure this clears the terminal. It can be longer, it can be shorter, it's entirely up to you. I like to make it just uh, roughly about where the model ends. In this case, I'm just doing it by eye, typing in a value. Last thing here, it's what you'll see is it's actually creating a composite part. Everything in the wiring suite of features uses composites, and you might want to give that a name. But it's actually better, I think, doing it here. So if you do a, you know, three and a half millimeter spade terminal, something like that, that will then set the name. And it also sets the description in the properties as well. I think it just makes it easier if you're going to use configured connectors where you need to change the name and any other geometry in there. It makes it a little bit easier if you can configure the feature rather than using configured properties. Okay, so that's that one set up. Let's take a look at something a little bit more complex. So this again is a terminal, but it's uh, imported using as a composite, but it's actually two parts. Again, I've assigned face colors to make sure that the colors are consistent whenever it's used. The also what I've done here is created a sketch which represents the terminal or the size and the shape of the terminal where this terminal connects, which is basically the shape of, uh, of these uh, features here is being, uh, I just wanna make sure that I find the exact center point because when I, when I insert it, I'm going to, my choice is to select this end face here to position that terminal, okay? You might do something different, but that is my choice in this case. Okay, so that's the position. Let's go ahead and create this as a connector. So again, I'm going to go to define, insert the connector terminals, it's selecting the composite part, 
okay and notice that that hasn't changed yet select the insertion point which is this now because it's a sketch the orientation might not be right so again we want to edit the make connector this time we'll realign the uh, primary axis okay which gives us the z-axis in the correct orientation and put in the offset which we know in this case is minus eight okay it's a terminal so there's a single pinout which again we're going to select this face and the name i don't know let's use the uh, the part number two seven six triple oh five and we're going to set that and just leave the default of strip length and insulation of five millimeters okay now have i defined this correct well the easiest way to test this is to try and insert it now because it's a part studio feature it means that you don't have to wait until you create a wiring assembly in order to test this so let's go ahead and test this on the part to which it will attach by adding a wire connector feature we're going to go to insert select now because we're only using composite parts you'll see it only shows composite parts so it doesn't show individual parts or sketches or anything else which might belong in that part studio so we're just going to go ahead and select that part specify where the locations are which in this case is here and you'll see it's wrong okay so first of all it's in the wrong orientation we can fix it by flipping this and then rotating but you know we don't want to do that every time so it makes sense to modify the connector part so it comes in right first time let's undo those two flip actions for now and go back to the definition of the uh, of the connector okay so let's edit that and we're going to again edit the make connector this time we'll flip it here and you can see it's flipped around the other side so let's just make that uh, plus eight to get it back in the right location and we probably just want to do i think one rotation let's just try that okay so let's accept that go back to the um the power jack and it's in the right location so let's just edit that and just double check so if you want to put one on here okay that's right and one on here that's right as well okay so it's just a nice easy way to check that the connector is set up correctly before you save it and version it and store it off as a library component great okay remember to delete this feature from here because we don't want to include that in the definition of this part you know we're just using it for testing okay and finally we're going to take a look at a connector so this one's already set up uh, so we've done the usual we've got a make connector positioning the um, insert point but now we have specified a connector so it's got a number of pinouts okay I've selected a face here but I could have created make connectors for each one of them with individual offsets the important difference here is that it has multiple pinouts but it also has designators okay if you decide not to include any designators the 3d wiring will assume that you're going to assign the wires in this order but if you use the same designations each time you use a connector like live neutral and earth then you should put it into the definition of the connector so that means every time you route using one of these connectors it will select the pins automatically so it's going to define this pin as live this one as neutral this one as earth and you can either reorder using uh, this button and you know you can just drag these like you can do normally or you can just reorder the designator names either it doesn't matter okay as long as you define those and it knows that those are called live neutral and earth okay remember once you've actually created these if you've created them in a separate document that you should version them so they can be accessed when you're inserting components from other documents and then you can use labels or folders or team names whatever you want to do to organize that data a clip feature is not necessarily a physical clip like this one it's just a waypoint or a location in which to route the wires so it could be a clip it could be a hole in a bulkhead it could be a channel along a cable tray just somewhere as a waypoint between the connectors of the wire when it goes from a to b it's just an intermediate point however if you want to use clips 
you can predefine them so that when you assemble them in, you already know or you've already predefined the location of the clip and where the wire will go. So in this case here, we're going to go to the clip feature. We're going to add a clip because again, we can create multiple clips in one go. And the axis or channel in this case will be uh, this circular arc. And what we're looking for here is something which defines an axis. So it can be an edge, an arc, a circle, uh, a planar face, something like that, which defines a direction. Because the center of the axis is way down below the part, one of the options here you can do is to select the part. Okay, so if we add that to that, you now get an option here for use part center. And that's basically using the bounding box of this part. So you can see that it's slightly off from the center of the clip area. You'll also see that there are manipulators which have been added to here. Okay, the zero point for these is the actual physical geometry that you selected. Okay, so that's going to give me the extents of the wire coming in and out of the clip. So you can extend those bigger, uh, but not smaller than the actual physical geometry. Notice also it's created a composite part here called clip. So if you just go ahead and accept that, we see we now have a composite part that we can use in the assembly. And when we look at routing the wires in 3D, you'll see how those clip features are used. Alternatively, you could have created a sketch which represents the axis of the clip and then just selected that sketch entity and the feature would have used that instead. Okay, one of the other options that you'll notice in here is the clip make connector. And this is basically just adding, well, it's doing two things. First of all, it's adding a make connector to the composite part. So when you want to assemble it in the assembly, it's a little bit easier to assemble the part. Also, the Z axis or the blue axis of this make connector is affected by this value here. Okay, so what you'll see is if I modify this value, you can see it's going in the direction of the Z axis of the part. Okay, you can also go minus as well. So it might be a good idea to flip that around the opposite way. And what this vertical axis is doing here is that when you are routing in 3D, once multiple wires or cables go through the clip, they will all interfere. They will all follow the same axis because there is no way to spread them out just yet. So the intermediate solution here is to provide an offset. And typically you do this during the wire route rather than define it in the clip. You define the clip as the nominal position for the wire, but during the 3D route, if the cable wires start to get thicker and thicker, you've got a bundle in there or something like that, and you don't want the wire to start poking through the part that this clip is attached to, then you can start defining a vertical offset. Now the wire will now go through here, so you will see it interfere with the clip, but at least it won't interfere with the part that it's attached to. So that was what the vertical offset is giving you. If you wanted to do a clip which is a little bit more complex, like this wire duct here, and you have multiple wires going in and out, now there, of course, there are multiple solutions here, and I've represented that in a sketch. So each one of these small segments here represents a wire can come in at any location, follow a couple of minimum bend radius arcs, and exit in another location. Now, all this would be defined or determined during the 3D wire writing, but you want to create this as a standard part. We can also do that with a clip feature. So what you'll see here is that we want to define an axis or a channel path, okay? If we click one axis here, we get as we did before, if we click a disconnecting axis, you'll get an error because it's not possible to route from one curve to another if they're not connected. Okay, but if you wanted to define a path, you could say, okay, well, let's go through here and let's uh, pick this edge here. So we're coming along here, we're going to exit along this route here. That is now what we call a channel. So it's giving you an entry point and an exit point, and there is a clear path defined between the two. That's uh, perfectly fine. And what you'll see is that it now creates a curve. If I had that sketch, it creates a curve, but you'll see it's just a copy of the individual sketch entities. What you can also do is if it's a single curve, you can extend those. There's also another option here to create a single curve. So now, you'll see there's just a single spline. So it's just going to make the path a little bit easier to select. Okay, but what you'll see is if I, if I edit this, let me just uh, turn that off for now and just remove all those uh, items from there. If I wanted to include all those as an option, then I can select the entire sketch. 
but now there isn't a clear path from entry to exit so it's going to come up with an error so the new option here is to add a clip network which means that there are multiple solutions okay and all that is really doing is making a copy of the sketch or multiple entities that you selected and attaching it to this part that you could then use as a library part and as before we're going to add a make connector on here and probably flip it the other way around just so we can add uh, an offset as well so again you'll see the vertical offset will offset those up or down so now you'll see you've you got a part with multiple curves on it and during 3d routing what you would have to do is then select the path for those wires to follow so if you want to come in here and want to exit uh, over here then you would select those as the path during the routing of the wire to drive the automatic 3D wiring in Onshape, first of all, you need a CSV file that's created either manually from a spreadsheet or from a 2D wiring schematic package. It should be formatted so that the first row has column headers and then each row should have a unique wire ID. Don't worry about the names of the headers because that can all be mapped inside Onshape using variables. Also, the order of the columns is also not important but for each wire id there should be a from reference i.e the connector a pin the to reference and a pin and then the next four columns describe the wire geometry and the minimum requirement is that you have one of these columns diameter is the outside diameter of the wire including the insulation area is the cross-sectional area of the wire core in this case, it's in millimeters. Again, it's a variable that you set inside on shape for the units. Gauge is AWG, so that's the standard American wire gauge numbers. And then insulation is the thickness of the insulation. And again, in this case, in millimeters. And with a combination of one or more of these columns, on shape will calculate the wire geometry. So, for example, if you have an area of 1.5 millimeters squared plus the insulation, that's going to give you. The external diameter of the wire or if you've got the external diameter of the wire plus the gauge or you could just have an area and a gauge on its own or a combination of any as long as at least one of these values describes the wire geometry the final two columns are optional bend radius again in millimeters is the minimum bend radius for that wire if you leave the value blank then it will use a factor of the wire diameter, which is set using a variable in Onshape. Finally, the color, you can either input that in English, uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter, by RGB values separated by commas, or as a hex value prefixed with a pound sign or a hash symbol. If you leave the color blank, all your wires will come out a gray color. This is a typical output from a 2D wiring schematic. If you want to construct this manually and you don't really need to see individual wires for a cable, just create a wire ID, a from and to reference with one pin of each, and a diameter and a color and a bend radius, and that will generate the external geometry of a cable. Once complete, save the spreadsheet as a CSV file and upload it into OneShape. To start creating wires and cables in 3D, first of all, you need a part studio with an assembly context. First thing to do really is to set up the assembly so you've got the view that you need. Display states are a good way to do that. Notice that this assembly has the clip parts that we created earlier assembled at the top level. To create the part studio, right click the origin and select create part studio in context. That will create the part studio and show the assembly as a ghosted image. Now the first feature we want to add is the wire data feature and select the CSV file that we imported earlier. When you select it, you'll see that an error comes up straight away telling us that the wire length units have not been set and it's defaulting to millimeters. That's because this feature relies on variables to define units and column headers from the CSV file. So we take a look at the variable studio, currently empty, and we're going to insert one which has all these values set. Now these defaults are in this document, but in reality, the best way to do this would be put it in another document, which is a standard. 
that you reuse over and over again. So let's take a look at what these values do. The first 11 rows are the column headers. So depending on the output from your TD schematic, you should set these variables to match. So for example, if you spelt gauge wrong, you'll see that the wire data feature now has an error saying that the information is incorrect or missing. Okay, so let's, uh, let's undo that to fix that problem. Further down here, we have the wire bend factor, and this is the diameter multiplier that it uses if the minimum bend radius has not been specified. Wire length units is the units in the CSV file rather than the units in the workspace because you can mix and match. To change these, just type in the unit name. So currently this is millimeters. If you want inches, just do that and it will do the conversion for you. And the wire length precision will round the values of the wire lengths up to the nearest value that you specify. So if you want it to the nearest five millimeters, for example, type in five. And this prevents wire lengths with multiple decimal places. And finally, the wire length ID is the ID of a custom property that you want to use to add the length to the wire parts. So if you've got a professional or enterprise plan, you can create your own custom properties. If not, you could use something like title three, for example. So just go to the custom properties in your settings and copy and paste the value of the property ID into this variable and make sure it's in double quotes. So once the wires are rooted in 3D, that value will be automatically set and then you can use it in a bill of materials in a drawing, for example. Okay, what the wire data feature has also done is created a custom table called wire data. And this table is split into two. The first table is the reference table. So this is the connectors. So these are the connector names and these are the pins that were specified in the from to list. The connector names and the pin names are all sorted alphabetically. So they may not be the correct pin order. It's just really there for information. Below the reference list, you'll see there is a wire list and this is the from to list. So it's telling me these are the wire IDs. It's going from connector power earth to PSU pin one. Length is currently blank. The diameter is taken from the values in the from to list, as is the bend radius. Any cell which is this kind of pinky red color means that it has either not been specified or there is an error. Finally, what this feature created is a composite part called wire in context reference. And that is there to make it easier for you to manage context, especially if you're using multiple contexts as you're routing wires in 3D. So for example, here we created the context in this part studio, but we haven't actually selected any geometry. So the context hasn't actually been created yet. And we can see that there is no context menu at the top of the feature list. So if I was to switch back to the assembly, for example, to take a look at something, then go back to the part studio, you can see that we've lost the context. So what you would normally have to do is go back to the assembly, create a brand new part studio in context, and then you've got duplicates and you've got to go through building the wire data feature and so on and so forth. So to avoid that, I've created this part that can be then assembled back into the top level assembly at the origin, and then a new context can be created against that. The better workflow I think though, is to create an assembly. Okay, and you might want to um, call that something like wiring. And in this sub assembly, I'm now going to insert composite part because of course all wiring elements of composites, find the um, part studio, the wiring context reference, add that, mate it to the origin rather than fix because we're going to assemble this to the top level. So this makes it very easy, just going to go fasten to the origin, that mate connector. Okay, so that part is fastened there. Now in the top level, we're going to insert the assembly or wiring, okay, and again, you've got the, the make connector. To turn on the origin, I can now assemble this and fasten it to the origin as well. So fasten to the origin, this part here. Okay, so now we can see we have a subassembly called wiring, and in there is a composite part called wire in context reference. All it's here for is to make it easy to manage the context and you can also set this as the primary instance. So as parts come and go while you're creating wires in 3D, you won't lose the primary instance. So now we can edit in context 
it's going to take us back to the part studio that we created earlier. So again, we're not duplicating effort. So every time you create a new context or edit or update a context, you can do it on this composite part rather than relying on any solid wires that are created within this part studio. Before we can add the wires, we need to assign the references. And before we assign references, we need to add connectors. So go to the wire connector feature. The default is insert, select a part studio, and these are all the composite parts within this document. If these were library parts, you would search for them in another document and simply browse to the connector that you want to add. Select the geometry reference and the connector will be added. Note that this selection was based on how the connector was defined and we can add as many connectors of the same type in the same feature as we want. Notice that the references haven't been assigned. That is the next step because you can have different references for the same connector type. Let's add some more. If the wire connector has been defined correctly, then this process should be very simple, simply by selecting the correct reference. Let's just add a couple more. This time we'll add a three wire connector. And again, select the references. So one here and one here. So again, it's defined with respect to this receptacle and it appears in the correct location. If you wanted to add it to a different type of receptacle, you'll see that in some cases, the position and the orientation may not be correct. Again, because this library part was defined relative to the other receptacle. It's not a big deal. All you need to do is just remove that one and create another wire connector feature with the same part. And this time we're going to use the flip or rotate options to get the connector in the correct orientation. Now to define the references, go to the wire ref feature and add a reference. Notice that it'll default to the control reference because that's the first one in the list. If you want to override that, simply type in the new name. Lowercase or uppercase, it doesn't matter. Notice that it's selected the correct pins, Earth Live and Neutral, as is shown in the reference list. Also, each pin has a star next to it, just to let you know that it's not yet been assigned. And then simply select the connector parts to define those references. So Earth, Live and Neutral. And two things have happened here. First of all, the pin has now been assigned. And secondly, the pin data has been taken directly from the connector part, both the curve geometry and also the strip and stub length. You can override these if you wish by changing these values or pulling the manipulator and you can see that is updating on all of them. Now the order of the pins can be changed by clicking the reorder items option or simply by reselecting the parts in the correct order. To add more references, click add reference. Again, it's going to default to the control reference and override that by typing in the value. In this case, for the power supply unit, there are 10 pins that have already been predefined in the connector. So simply selecting the connector part will automatically assign all 10 pins. And of course you can reorder them or change them. That is no problem. And the strip length and stub length have automatically been taken from the connector. Let's add a couple more references. In this case, the temperature control will select this part. Now just be careful when you're selecting because what you'll see here, it tried to add that part to the previous selection. Okay, so just be careful when you're selecting to click into the parts field first before selecting. And now we have the pins, live, neutral and signal that have been predefined in this connector. Of course, we can remove these from here and add them individually or reorder them. That's not a problem. Okay, finally, what happens if you've got a wire to board? Or in this case, we're using a fan and we simply want to route the wires which are connected to the fan. It doesn't have a connector on the fan end, only on the connector end. Or it could be a wire being soldered to a board, again, which doesn't have a connector. So we'll simply add this reference 
and this will be fan one. And rather than select a part, we're going to select the in context geometry 12 volt, ground, and sense. Now, because this is a continuation of wires which are physically connected to the fan, then it makes no sense that there should be a strip length because that would add unnecessary length to the wire calculation. So set that to zero. And the stub length, you can leave it at the default five or you can drag it right down to a very small number. It can't be zero because a vector is required for the direction of the cable. But if you wanted the wire to start from here, you can set that to the default minimum 0 0.01 millimeters or just leave it a little bit of a stub just to give it something to select. You don't have to create all the references in one feature, you can create multiple ones, but you'll see that the table now shows that these references have been assigned, so now we can start to add wires. Before you can start to add wires in 3D, you have to go through all the setup steps as shown in the previous videos. So I've imported the from two data to populate the references list and the wire list. We've added the connectors, and specified the references from the from to list and attached them to the connectors. And this has now caused the reference table to change color to show that those items are defined. And those have created a list of curves for all the individual pins that can be reused if needed. And a list of composite parts, which is all the connectors that have been added. Now, before you start adding the wires, make sure your screen is set up the way you want it. So either change the context or you can hide items that you don't need. Okay, then go to the wire routes feature and add a wire. Now notice that it's added the first wire from the list, E1. It's also calculated the length, which has been rounded to the value that is set in the variables and also the diameter from the from to list. Now, because this wire is connecting two connectors that we've added, then it's considered to be a cable. So we can now see we've got a cable called E1 that also has the same length and the same diameter wire. And also the cable is listed in the list here. And the connectors have also been removed from this list. If you want to see the wire in 3D, just click show wires and cable. And now we can take a look at what information is stored within this wire. So we have the wire ID, the from two, we can override the color if you wish, and edit the wire, which we'll come on to in a moment. Clips and channels, you can select an existing clip or channel that you've created from a clip feature, which is assembled at the assembly level and shown in the context, or as we'll see later, you can select the center line of an existing wire. What you can't do here is create implicit make connectors on the in-context geometry. So if you want to use make connectors, they have to be created first before you create the wire out feature. But you see that if we hover over the clip, it doesn't select it. So we'll specifically pick out the curve and then add that as a waypoint for the wire. The path is calculated using shortest distance, starting from the first connector. So the shortest distance from here to here, then from here to here, and then finally from the clip to the last connector. If you want to add more wires, click add wire, and it's going to get the next one from the list. Now notice that the list now says it's a harness because it's considered that there are three separate connectors all connected together. And we'll add one more wire in there as well. Now to route these second wires, you can go through the process of selecting the clips again, but that doesn't really make much sense. Or you can use the follow first wire option, which will take the clips from the very first wire. But that's not really very realistic. What you're likely to do is to create a cable. Now you can see that the cable consists of three wires. The length of the cable is the length of the longest wire, and the diameter includes the insulation thickness that you've added here. So if we change that, You'll see that the cable diameter has changed, but also we've got a bend radius violation in there as well. Okay, so let's change that back for now. If you want to edit the cable, this is driven from the very first wire in the feature. If you want to add more cables, then you must create a separate feature because all the wires in the current feature will be added to the current cable. 
Note that the interface now for the other wires has changed, so there is no option there to select clips. And if we select Edit Wire, then there are only point manipulators on the visible wire segments. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit the cable. Now we have point manipulators on the visible cable of wire number one, plus the individual segments of the cable. If we select one of these points, it makes that segment of the cable or wire active. And by default, there are only tangent manipulators. So I can change the amount of tangency in that segment of the wire. But if you select the end portion of a cable, you have more controls, both the tangency manipulators and also endpoint manipulators for position and angle. Now, when you're editing a wire or a cable, it's a good idea to turn the 3D off for performance reasons. Okay, so let's have a look at this cable. And now with this manipulator, we can drag the X, Y, and Z positions, or we can use a planar option. There's also angular manipulators on here as well. So you can start to make the cables look a lot more realistic. And then manipulate the cable in lots of different orientations to get it looking exactly how you want. So now when you turn the 3D back on, it really looks the part. Before you commit the feature, get into the habit of turning off the edit wire simply for performance reasons, because then it's not trying to create the manipulators during part regeneration. You can tell if edit wire is active because there is a star or asterisk next to the name if the wires are collapsed to make it easier to find. Okay, and there's the first cable. Let's go ahead and add the next one. Now we'll add a wire and we can see it's added E3, which was the next one on the list. And the reason it's added it to the harness is again because it's sharing connectors with other cables. Now, if we didn't want to route this one just yet, you can go ahead and override that just by typing in the wire name. And now when you add more wires, it's going to get the next wire that was in the list. So rather than going to L3, it's gone to L2 and we'll go ahead and create the cable like we did before. To edit the cable, of course, we're going to edit the very first wire. And in this case, we're going to add a clip. Now notice that we've got two things going on here. First of all, the cable's gone through the clip in the wrong direction. And secondly, we've got a red segment of cable here, which indicates a bend radius violation. And again, you can see that on the table, are showing in the kind of pinky red color. Now the wire or cable has gone through the clip in the wrong direction because it's using shortest distance. In many cases, this can be fixed just by adding in more clips. So if we add this clip over here, it's going to fix the clip direction. However, if that's not possible, or you want to have more control over clip direction, then all we're going to do is edit the wire. And if you remember, the direction of the wire or cable determines the shortest distance to the clip. So we're going from PSU to M1. So this is PSU here and this is M1 over here. So we're going to edit this wire segment to control how the cable goes through the clip. Now this is a tangency manipulator. So we can't just flip it around the opposite way because it only goes so far. But what we can do is add additional control points to the wire. And if we look from the top view, you probably get a better idea of what's going on. So we're clicking this wire segment we're going to edit. And we can see now we've got a manipulator on that point that we created. And simply just dragging that to that side of the clip is going to fix how the cable goes through that clip. But in this case, we're going to use this clip here. But now because we've added a point, we can see that's also now going through the clip in the wrong direction. Of course, we can move this. If we move this over here, it's going to fix it. But if we need to remove those, we can either hit the remove option here and click on there, which will remove the point. We can use the undo, which is going to undo every step that I take, including selections and redo, which is active only for the current session of Onshape. But there's also an undo reset button here, which you can use at any time to remove any of the manual editing to the wire. So if you click that, you can see the extra points are automatically removed and the cable is fixed. Now for clips, you don't actually have to use the clips that we've selected. For example, if I now remove uh, this one, okay, yes, we're going to get the broken cable again, 
but I've actually got a sketch in here which represents the path I want the cable to follow. So let's add the sketch to the clip list. And now again, it's going to follow the shortest route or the shortest distance from A to B going through the selected clips. It could be a sketch or it could be a clip feature. However you want to generate it, as long as it's a sketch or a curve, it will work as a clip feature. We've now got two areas of bend radius violation as shown in red. Let's start on the back here. So we're going to edit this segment here. And if we look round at the back, we now have the same manipulators as we had before. So we can drag this around here, perhaps put in some angle and really just trying to get rid of those red segments. So that wire looks great in that orientation. Let's have a look around at the right hand side because the clip is along the back wall of the cover. Then we can see that the wire is following this path here. So again, you might want to make this a little bit more realistic. Bring this over a little bit here, modify the angle. Okay, and now we're getting a more free flowing cable moving between the clip and the connectors themselves. Okay, so that's that side fixed. Let's go and look at this. Now this is a little bit more involved. So again, we're going to edit this segment and we have these manipulators here. So again, let's start to move that, perhaps introduce some uh, rotation in there. But no matter how much I play with these manipulators, I'm not going to get rid of this bend radius violation, which you can see highlighted with this arrow here. So let's go back and add some more points as before. And let's add two. So I'm just going to go ahead and select two. Now you can move these around whilst in the add function, but to find it better to switch back to edit, just so you don't accidentally add any more manipulators to the curve. Okay, so we can play around with this until we get rid of the red segments. Again, you might want to check different orientations. So this cable at the moment, you might want to bring that uh, perhaps down a little bit, perhaps a little bit, to, again, a little bit of rotation in there. And in doing that, you know, we can get this cable again, looking a lot more realistic. If you want to see how it's looking in 3D, just pop over here and turn that on. And you can see now that is now being displayed in the 3D. One final check at the top. Okay, and you can start to see this is looking uh, pretty good. When you do get bend radius violations, sometimes you might be tweaking these manipulators a lot and the, and the red arrow is moving from one point to another and it's hard to determine exactly which one you should be moving. At any time, you can right click and just do show curvature and that will show you all the curvature combs within the current feature. Okay, so it might make it easier in some instances to see the curvature of the cable. Okay, before you leave the feature, turn on show wires cable to make it 3D. Turn off edit wire to clean up the feature. Press OK, and now we have a harness made up of two cables. Again, as shown in here. If you move over the table, you'll see highlighting the individual wires or the cable itself or the harness. And over in the parts list, there is now a composite part, which is harness. And you can see that includes all the connectors and all the wires and all the cables that go into this harness. Okay, let's have the next one. Now it's gone back to E3 because that's the next available one. Uh, so let's add E3, L3, N3. Let's make them a cable. Okay, now we want to follow a path that's already been created by another cable and then turn this into a bundle. Okay, at the moment it's not going to do anything because there's nothing selected. To make a bundle, it's important that you select the center lines of existing cables rather than a clip or a curve or a sketch or something like that. So the best way to do that is to turn on shaded with hidden edges. And now you can see the center lines of the cables or wires on the screen. Let's go and edit the first wire. And the clip this time is going to be the center line of the cable. Now you see that says edge of wire route two. Just make sure that when you select the next edge, that it also is part of wire route two. And you could probably use select other just to double check. And it is in this instance. Now, when you're creating a bundle, you only have to select the start and end curve and it will find the path for you. So if I select here, you can see the curve has followed the path of the other cable. It's coming out here. You want to add in another clip there. You can do that as well. But what you'll see down here is that because it's a cable, then there's an extra segment here that we don't want. 
and this is where the strip parameter comes in. So where should the cable be stripped? The default is by manipulator. Then we've got first clip, last clip, both clips. So the first clip is called a clip even though it's a wire. So this cable is going to strip back to the sheathing on the other cable. And now if we show it in 3D, we've got the two cables together plus the covering thickness that we've added in this parameter here as well. And we should fix that bend radius violation there, but we'll leave it for the purpose of this video. Finally, we'll add just one more cable. And this time we'll ignore the fan cables and go straight to the temperature control cables. But if you forget what they're called, this is where the table comes in handy because now we can scroll down and see which references have been added and which wires represent them. So we'll start with T1. And add the other two wires in there and create a cable. Now we're going to add this to the harness. So in the clips this time, we're going to use select other to double check which of the edges are required. So we've got wire out two or wire out three. So which one is it? Well, I actually want this cable to follow along here. So it's a good idea to check what this one is. So that's wire out three. Actually, we'll finish through this clip. So I'm going to select wire out three and then want to make sure that we're selecting here wire out three as well which just happens to be the covering on the bundle. Okay, so let's go ahead and select that. And we'll turn off hidden edges just to make it easier to see and also make the wire in 3D. Now we can see it's actually coming down here. It's entering the bundle down here. That's not exactly what we want. It is exiting in the right place. But now when we do it, edit wire, we see the exact same controls as before. But if you add it to the bundle, you get some extra manipulators because now what we're creating is a harness or a bundle where you're going to create splice points where you're going to have cables coming in and out of a covering at different locations. So now you can position the start point of this along the curve that you've selected. So as we drag this up here, you can see we're defining the splice point for that bundle anywhere along that long edge or any edge for that matter. And then the final edits that we'll do uh, to this part of the cable at the back here is just to position or orient that to be more realistic. So again, we can drag this down here somewhere and add a little bit of rotation in there to make the cable come down and then back up again. Notice we've still got, of course, a little bit of uh, red in there, but that's simply the position or how tight we've done this. So again, we can just move this over uh, perhaps put a little bit of rotation in there. If any of the 3D wire geometry disappears, it's usually because of a bend radius violation, and this will be displayed in an error message in here. So if we just add a little bit of rotation in here to get rid of that minimum bend radius, then we're now starting to get something which looks very good indeed. Turn off edit wire, make sure it's in 3D, commit the feature, and our wire out is taking shape. 